This is the modern Puko from the Polish company Zapaz. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this knife, keep watching. Just before we get started, I do want to thank the company Zapaz for sending out the modern Puko so that I can share it with you. So what we'll do is we'll just focus in on the knife itself. I'll go over its specifications and features and design, and then of course I'll do a few demonstrations with it before we wrap this video up. Now just before we focus in on the knife itself, let's take a quick look at the sheath. Made of leather, black in color, good quality sheath, simple belt loop on, held on with a rivet here rivets at the stress points. Leather is thick and quite stiff, holds the knife quite securely. I have yet to do any treatment to the leather and I will do that and it'll probably help to take the shape over time. Just functional, good looking sheath for sure. All right, let's take the knife out. I'll go through a few specifications for this knife, starting with the overall length, 7.8 inches, 195 millimeters, blade length, 3.5 inches, 90 millimeters, blade thickness, three millimeters. The steel, 80 CRV2 carbon steel, hardened between 59 and 60 on the Rockwell scale. The handles are made of ash. All right, now let's get into the design. So this is known as the modern Puko, and it does have a very classic Puko look to the knife, but it is modernized, and I'll get to how they did that in a moment. Starting with the blade, there is a slight drop from the handle forward to the tip. Not a whole lot, but the spine is flat all the way down. There's no change in the spine. It just drops continuously. At the same time, the blade edge curves continuously towards that tip, and as you can see, it's quite fine at the tip. This should be a good carbon knife. I say should be, but I'll get to that in a moment. Handle, uh, just a nice barrel handle, flat on the sides. And what makes this a modern Puko, I guess, is the fact that it is full tang and made of a more modern steel than the classic old Pukos were. Other than that, the only other features worthy of note, tiny little bit of a guard, probably more of a nuisance than anything else to some people because it is quite sharp. It wasn't finished and rounded off tiny bit of a sharpening choil right here. Now, the handles are held on by Allen screws and there is a lanyard hole with a small piece of paracord that I put through it. Here is the elephant in the room. A Puko should be Scandinavian grind by design. That's what a classic Puko would be. This is not a Scandinavian grind. As much as it looks like it is, it is not. It is a saber grind. And I say that because there is a very pronounced secondary grind on this. The front primary grind is about halfway up, and then the secondary grind. Now, you might say it's a Scandi grind with a second, a Scandi grind with a secondary edge, but really, on all honesty, that's a saber grind. That's exactly what that is, and it does have an impact on its performance, and we'll get to that in a few moments' time. Now, having said that, let's just talk about the steel. ADCR V2, very commonly used these days in a lot of knives coming out of Scandinavia and Europe. Good steel, really tough, known to be able to take quite a bit of hard use and maintain its edge at the same time. If it's well heat treated, it should work very well and over the long term. Here's been my experience with the knife so far. Edge maintenance, good, very good. And it hasn't chipped, hasn't rolled, it has dulled a little bit, but it's really easy to maintain. That surprises me at 59 to 60 on the Rockwell scale. That is quite hard for the steel. Now, the steel can take it. It can go higher. But I was surprised that if it's that hard, how easy it was to, well, first off, how easy it was to dull, and then how easy it was to sharpen. That's usually a hallmark of a less hard steel. But that's not the only comment I'm going to make about the heat treat. And this is not a feature you often find in knives at this price. By the way, $49 Canadian. I don't think you can do too bad about that. That's, that's a great price, and plus shipping to, from Poland, of course. And here's been my experience, as I'll demonstrate in a few moments' time. It doesn't scrape well. It really does not scrape well. I, can f I worked on the edge with a file, and I actually have a burr enough that it catches my fingernails. You can probably see it catching there as I go. But as I'll try and demonstrate, it is just not a good knife on wood or fat wood or ferrocerium steel, especially ferrocerium. It's not doing, doesn't do well there at all. And that's after I did some grinding on it. Now I'm going to be doing some more because I just want to see if I can't make it scrape better, but it's not scraping well as is. My theory is, as with another knife from Zapaz that I recently tested, the Expendable, this may have differential heat treat. And what that means is, of course, is that the edge is hardened harder than the spine. Now, that's a good thing in knife design. What it means is that the knife can take a lot more hard use 
and not bend or break or snap, but still maintain a good sharp edge if it, the heat treat is done correctly. Not something you often see on production knives, more of something you'll see on custom knives. I can't say that this has, the company doesn't state that, but it's one explanation at least for why the spine will not take and maintain a sharp edge on it. Despite the fact that I can feel that burr, it still does not want to scrape well as you'll see in a few moments time. Okay, overall, here's the performance thing about this knife and you'll see it in a few moments time. It's not a Scandi, it does not carve as well as a true Scandi would. If I took the time to put this on stones and reprofile the edge so it came down to a true zero degree edge, then I think it would greatly improve the performance of its carving. Having said that, this is what it is. So it's up to you. Do you want to keep this edge? Now this secondary bevel will keep an edge longer as a result of it having more meat behind the very apex of it, but it won't cut into wood as well as a true zero ground Scandi. So it's just kind of, what do you want? Do you want the ultimate in carving or do you want some long-term edge holding and maintenance so it doesn't roll chip and all that type of thing? All right, those are my comments on this knife. Let's put it to a little bit of use. All right, so one thing I'm not gonna do with this knife is I'm not going to baton it. Not that it could, couldn't withstand it, but it's just the size. At under four inches, this is not a knife you would use for batoning. In fact, I did bring a larger knife out today, the other knife from Zappas, the Expendable. That was my splitting knife. This is intended to be my carving knife. So I'm not gonna do any batoning because it's just not the mission I would use this knife in. Having said that, let's do a little bit of carving with it. And I guess the curve and I do most often for these demonstration is start with is a feather stick. Now this is a piece of maple I split out with the expendable. It is hard hard sugar maple or rock maple. So I was just going to see if I can well let's just see if I can work the knife in a little bit. Just rolling the knife in to get the yeah that is hard. But I think it's working. What I'm doing of course is I'm creating a feather oh, not a feather stick a tent peg. In order to do that, you have to create an L7 notch. And it's working. Right. That's about all it needs to hold the guideline on. So the knife does a good job of this type of carving because it is small in the hand, has a great edge for doing this type of carving, but let's see what it does with putting a point on. Now here I expect this knife to do a good job putting a point on a tent peg in the chest lever because the rounded barrel shape of the handle lends itself to multiple grips forward grip, reverse grip, just about any grip you want. And there's enough of a shoulder here to be comfortable with my thumb. So let's just use the chest lever, put a quick point on this and see what happens. Well, it certainly did that and did that very well. So there's the point. All right, now let's just do a little bit of feather sticking. All right, so this is another one of the splits of sugar maple. And the grain is nice and straight. The wood is nice and dry, but it is hard wood. All right, let's just see what we can do as far as creating curls. So, I'm struggling to keep or maintain the right angle for this to bite into the wood. It's like it either wants to go too high all of a sudden or I don't have it high enough to do any biting. Having said that, it is still creating curls, just not easily. And they're good curls, they're just not long. Let's try on the other side and see if I can't get something a little longer. All right, as you can see, I am struggling here with this. Let's see if I can find another edge here somewhere to work on. Yeah. All right, so here's the thing. 
it did create some nice fine little curls. It just was not easy to use. It was not a joy to use. And it wasn't because of the grip in my hand. It is small and it disappears into my hand, but it's still comfortable. It is the fact that it has that secondary bevel. So the primary bevel, if, you, if this was a true Scandi, it would be quite a high Scandi. But as a saber grind, it's quite a low or midpoint saber grind. And it has to be looked at as a saber grind because it does have that secondary bevel, which is quite pronounced. It's not like a micro bevel. So as a result, it's hard to find the right angle for curving. Now, like I said, if this been a true Scandi, full on zero grind, I think this would have bit into this wood just crazy and would have been a really good, good carver for feather sticks. But as it is, it's passable, it's just not great. Okay, let's see what we can do as far as scraping goes. All right, a little bit of birch bark to catch my scrapings on. This is the one I was, no, it's not, it's another, it's not the one I was feathering, it's a different one. Let's see what I can do with it here. All right, so it is scraping the wood well enough. That's dry wood, so it's doing that fairly easily. Let's see what it does with a little bit of fat wood. Maybe right there. And it does fat wood well enough. As you can see, that's a good job on the fat wood. But here's where my experience has been not so good, and that is with the ferrocerium. Just make sure that the edge is clean from all the gummy fat wood there. Even I'm trying to use a nice clean edge on my ferrocerium rod. I'm just wasn't trying to hit the. See, I'm not getting sparks. I'm going running up and down. All right, it lit. But I gotta tell you, that was a bit of work to do that. All right, that's enough to wrap this video up. All right, a few closing thoughts on the modern Puko from the Polish company Zapaz. And let's just start with the very best thing I can say about this knife, $41 Canadian. Um, I mean, <laughs> that's a good price for a knife of this quality. Now, having said that, it does have its drawbacks, so you may end up investing a little bit of time and energy and sweat equity into the knife to get it to really perform. So the things that I like beyond the price, of course, is the overall profile of this knife. It really does look like a modern Puko. I love the slope of the blade. I love the curvature of the edge. Uh, not a big fan of this little tiny guard right here. That's probably going to be rounded it off when I get it home. I actually like the shape of the handles. They're profiled well enough. They're not especially thick through here. Wouldn't mind seeing them a little bit more barrel shape rather than slab sided. And you know, it is short. But for whatever reason, with my extra large hands, this still works because of that shape. It's comfortable in all grips because of that traditional barrel shaped Puko handle on it. So there is a lot to like about this. Now, the big thing that has to be worked on or has to be considered is the edge itself. It really is not a Scandinavian grind. It is not a zero grind knife. It may have been the intent to give it some extra edge durability by giving it a secondary bevel on it, but what's happened is it has just worked against the carving ability of this knife. So you have a couple of choices really. You can use it as is and know that you've got a good quality knife made of good quality steel that will certainly endure a lot of hard use, but at the same time it's not going to be what you expect from a Puko with a true zero grind Scandi. It's not going to carve as well as it could. So what can you do about it? Well, you can run this on some stones or give it to somebody who has the ability to run this on some stones and reprofile the edge. You're going to take off quite a bit of metal in order to do that properly. So don't look at this as an easy job. An alternative would be to kind of convex the secondary a little bit. That will help improve the cut and 
performance a little bit and actually add to the durability. But it's a, it's a, uh, how should I say, an extra step for a manufacturer to do, which is often the reason why it's only done on higher end or mid tech knives, is that uh, convex and polishing of the secondary. For me, I'm not quite sure. I'll probably start with a little bit of convexing on a belt sander and just to see where that goes. And if that doesn't work, then hollow out the stones and go to work and see if I can't take off the metal to make a true. Uh, full zero grind Scandi out of it. I think it's worth it. It's good steel. Now, the other thing is, I've, I can't explain this, and as I mentioned, my best guess is that it's a differential heat treatment. The edge holding is great as befits ADCR V2 carbon steel. It hasn't shipped, it hasn't rolled. You know, I have run it down ceramic rods and then stropped it and brought it back to virtually the old expression, hair pop. Actually, it's still sharp. It hasn't dulled at all. But sharpness is not the only criteria for a good carving knife. Grind and profile is. And uh, yeah, so the edge is great. The spine is not. And like I said, I've worked on this. It's got a burr on it. It's catching my fingernail. It still scrapes soft materials well. Doesn't scrape hard materials like ferrocerium, which suggests that the spine is softer than the edge. Now, if that's the case, then that's an extra step that the manufacturer put into this to give you the dur durable knife. Good on them for it but we like our spine sharp enough for ferrocerium rods. If you're okay with it not being sharp enough for that, then you, and you have something else to strike your ferrocerium rods, or you're not even gonna use one, you're gonna use a lighter or matches, then maybe that's not an issue for you at all. If you're not planning on scraping with this knife, then round it. Just round it right off, or not completely, but at least round off the edges of it, and that'll make it a much more comfortable carving knife, especially on your thumb. So there are things that you can do with this knife, and I guess at $41, you don't mind doing them because you haven't invested such a huge amount of money. You're not likely to ruin it, but it will change the knife with all that work. But okay, so that's enough said there. Those are my overall thoughts. I like the knife. It's just not a good carving knife at this point without some modification to it. All right, those are my thoughts on this knife. I'm opening up. What are your thoughts or questions that you may have? Put them in the comments section below. I'll be putting the specifications for this knife as well as the links where you can take another look at it. Like I said, $41, it's hard to beat, and that was actually the reason why I asked them to send it to me because I thought it was, you know, a good value knife. I certainly liked the other one, the Expendable. That's a good value knife as well. If you have any comments or questions, put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel, because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.